Hello again. So yesterday I provided an introduction to myself and basically shared my story up until now and my motivation to make the game that I'm making. Um, and basically, I, I'm just going to continue on that path. So here we are. Um, I wanted to, to share what I was unable to share with you yesterday when we left off. So I wanted to basically jump into this game, and I'm just going to jump into it. I ended up installing some better screen recording software for game streaming. Um, I'm using OBS. Played with it for about an hour and got it set up. And yeah, we'll just see how it goes. I did a couple takes already. Um, I wanted to try to make sure you can't hear my controller. Using an Xbox One controller while I develop in the scene. And yeah, so I'm just going to drive around for a little bit. Um, I basically just dropped the car controller in. Uh, sorry if you do hear the controller a little bit. I'm still going to be working on solving that. Uh, but yeah, so so this is the environment. No road there. No where I'm at. Um, so I built this environment with Gaia and Road Architect. Off here. I have no idea where I'm going. And I ended up basically just creating a type of terrain that I, I thought I would like. Um, and then I threw down a road system on it. And I didn't do a whole lot of detailed planning for any of the buildings that you see laid out. But as far as the road structure goes, uh, it basically just follows the landscape. Um, I tossed some pro builder stuff in here to try to figure out how I'm going to do the sidewalk areas. Um, as I generate road systems and networks with road architect, I end up using Gaia to respawn the textures for the terrain. So that's an iterative process that I go through. Um, I spent about a week on this environment so far, and I just kind of threw in the car controller without making any modifications. Um, I, I did in, increase the top speed, so he can actually go really fast. Um, I think I set it to like 350. Really kind of cool. Um, and the car controller is actually really fun. Like, does some cool stuff. Um, feels fun to drive. And yeah, th this was basically how I started my prototype and where I'm at after a week. Um, I plan on doing more of this after I figure out exactly what's next. So I, I didn't really do anything with the buildings yet. I, I really love uh, Seascape because it's so optimized. Um, I have all these buildings in the scene and I'm screen recording and I'm running at like 65 frames a second, which is awesome. And this car controller can basically drive up walls and stuff and drive sideways on walls, which is pretty cool. Um, and he apparently floats in the air a little bit too. So I, I'm going to sort out the physics and figure out what I want to do with that. Um, I, I'm going to obviously be adjusting them a good amount to get them to a good place. My my next steps are are not to continue working in this project is, but instead I will be working in that one, this project. So this is the menu system project, and again, I, I keep the project separate so that I can basically, I can't use the controller in this project, by the way, not yet. Um, I keep them separate so I can iterate faster through design uh, steps as I develop the menu system. So I have four profiles set up. I grew up playing Final Fantasy games, and I love the fact that 
after you beat the game, you could still go back into it and explore the world and find other stuff and just keep playing. Or you can start a new game and play again and try to beat it faster. But none of these profiles are actually, like I can't load into them yet. I'm actually going to reset the scene. So I'm saving all my data with player prefs right now. Probably going to switch that out to another system. I don't know exactly what yet, but I, I want to be able to set up a, a more robust save system. And I, I don't think player prefs is the way to go, mostly because if the user deletes their computer, gets a new computer, then they basically lose their save data. So I'm going to figure out the best path forward for that. But um, yeah, so so when you when you start play mode, you're presented with the menu, and the only option you could select is new game. Here you would enter your profile name. It doesn't matter what I select. Um, I can't use turn the game on. I need to add more characters. I guess I limited it. Um, anyway, so once you enter your profile name, you're brought to an empty scene. This scene will end up being the character introduction scene. And after the character introduction scene is completed, and you're, you're basically introduced to what the story of the game is, you will be brought into this world with some type of race or event. And then once you beat that race or event, you go to another scene type of thing, some kind of progression, and then you will be brought back into this world. And that's the game loop. So you start a new game, get the intro, you end up going into your first event, you beat the event, and you're, you drop back in the open world. And the idea is to scatter different events and races around this world. And yeah, I'm going to take it from there. So I, I haven't really written a story yet for the game. Um, I've been thinking about what I want to do with the story. Um, I'll share more once I have more info, but I don't right now. And I, I think this was basically all I wanted to show yesterday that I couldn't. So uh, when playing with OBS a little bit, I, I wanted to try to get my setup in a way. So I, I work on a widescreen monitor. Um, I typically have more Unity windows open than this. And this is why I work on a widescreen monitor, because it's you, you can see all of the windows and you could have everything that you need open at the same time. Um, if you're developing in Unity and you're not using one, I, I think it's one of the best investments you can make. Um, if you need to have multiple inspector or hierarchy windows for whatever reason, once you start building uh, large amounts of content and scenes, it, it can get pretty complex to manage all of those and you just need more windows and then you're opening the lighting window, the project window, all these different windows and yeah, and anyway, I love my widescreen monitor. Um, so when I'm, and, and I end up coding on my HD monitor, which is this one. So I set up OBS so I can switch between them. I could just turn off my widescreen and it automatically switches to the HD monitor. But then if I'm sharing code, whatever anybody wants to see throughout this process, if there's something more you want me to dig into, that's cool. Just let me know. Um, but for the most part, I'm just going to share what I feel like talking about, and I'm going to share it often. Um, I, I want to try to document this whole development process because I think it'll be interesting to look back on once I finish it. Um, it was really interesting to look back on a lot of the other content I created over the years. And I, I think this is, this is what I've been building up to. So I'm I'm really excited for it. Anyway, um, so so those are my plans. Uh, I am really looking forward to, to setting up a traffic system in the scene when it's finished and updating my my traffic system to 
basically be using ECS so that I could have thousands of vehicles around the street. And then that's kind of my, my vision. Um, but yeah, that's, I think that's all I really wanted to talk about. If anybody has any questions, go for it. Uh, ask in the comment section and I'll, I'll try to respond to you. Um, but yeah, um, thanks for checking it out. I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, bye.